Right, well, this is in effect is part two. It's now another day for me, although for you it's probably the same video. Now I'm going to run through the netting the pot because quite a few people have actually asked for it, but I mean, a lot of you will just go out, buy the net, put it on, but we'll go through it and I'll show you what you need to do, what you don't need to do with these pots as far as roping, that kind of thing goes. So anyway, we'll start off with the net. Now this net is... I think it's 40 or about 40 hole size. So a quick look. It's around you can say 40 to 45 normally. Yeah, 45 that way and 40 that way for some reason. But this is um this is a very thin one, sort of saying this is about three, this is probably two mil actually. But this is some old stuff that was given. It's come off an old trawl or something like that. It or was used to something along those lines, but it's good enough. Um if you use pots all the time, I'd go thicker, but if you're just doing a few pots now and again, or just for your own personal use, and it's not too rough where you pot and that, this stuff's fine. Um, I go with this stuff more so, which is four mil. Again, this is around 40. Yeah, it's 40, that one, definitely 40. And when they close up like that, it's anything from 65, can go up even up to 75, but it depends on, again, the thickness of your net, because obviously your knots are much bigger than that. So. Anyway, 40 for the holes, and you you can get there, I mean if you go down, if you live near harbours and things like that, you can always ask around, because sometimes the fishermen will be throwing old knackered nets away, and it might not be any good for what they use, but sometimes you can get enough to, to put on your crab pots, or use on your crab pots, like this sort of stuff, so you can always ask down there, alternatively you need to go to crab pot supplier, or a... Um, Chandler's would normally sell it. Although, again, it's all going to depend where you live and the shops. I mean, I can buy this in the tackle shop here, but that's because we have a tackle shop and it sells boat stuff as well, a bit of a mix. So, um, yeah, you just have to look around. You can find it on the internet, although it is a little tricky. Just look for, like I say, for crab pot suppliers. And it's cheaper to buy it by the roll or to buy a roll of it than it is to buy it per hole because you'll you'll spend a lot more. It, I mean if you're just doing one pot or two pot then by all means buy it like that. But if you're thinking of doing half a dozen pots, get a roll, it's worth it. Right, so now like I said before, if you build a pot, sometimes it's better to get the net and make the pot the same size as the net, then all you've got to do put the net on, tie it on, job's done. Like this you have to well what I'll have to do is I'm going to have to pull it till it's square, obviously, which will do to there, and it will probably pull it to about that bar there, and then I'll add a piece on here, but then I can use that end bit to cover the end or whichever way I do it. So like I say, if you want to make your life easier, then make your pot the same width as your net. You can buy it in different widths, so I think it's like a metre, metre and a half, two metres, something like that. Um, another way of doing net, the old traditional way, is um, with a netting needle. Now I do have some netting needles around here but I don't know where they are at the moment. They're basically just a flat thing with a spike. You put the string, like the crab pot string, this stuff, you wind it sort of back and forth on the netting needle so when you're making the net you're taking all the string through without them to sort of pull it through like whole lengths of it and basically you can just go around and make your own net. The thing is for me it's much quicker just to buy the net, much easier, quicker just to do that and tie it on. Um, the netting needle, I tend to use them more for repairs. If you need to repair you can make a bit of net if there's a hole, if you need to, that way. So I don't tend to, like I say, do it. You'll see that some of the old fishermen or that you are used to using netting needles, I've seen them up in Scotland actually when they do the creels because the creels are, some of the creels are small. And you see, and the speed they go, I mean, you can see why it's probably much quicker for them to do it with the needle than it is to put net on. Plus, again, it works out probably cheaper. I don't know, I've never worked it out, but probably cheaper just to buy a load of string and make your own net. But if you, you've got to have the time, if you don't have the speed kind of thing. Right, so, starting off, what you can do is you want to tie it down your net where you're going to start. Just make sure that it's straight, you've got no funny cut on it. You want to tie it down 
to the bottom of the pot. Now, I'll do it with a bit of string, like so, just to begin it off. You can use zip ties if you want, or you can use horseshoe nails if you've got only got those. It depends what you've got. Just use what you've got. I need something to cut it with. So you know what do. Now, what I'll do is I'll just. Um, you can either you can either whip it on, or just tie every three holes or something for the moment. Because you are going to rope this at the bottom, so you don't have to worry about it being properly on yet. Now the reason I do it at the base as well is because once this, all this net is on, you're going to rope the base with ropes. If you do it up here, you don't need to rope up there. So you'd have to string your net if you started up there. And if you start on any of these bars, and you break one of these bars, it's more going to be more complicated if you've got a join in the net. So I always start at the bottom, simply because this is where you're going to rope it up good once you finish the pot, because obviously this is the bit that's going to be bouncing around the bottom. So you just whip it around like that. Um, if you want to put the other, put, cut it to length first, you can. But I tend to put it on like that so I can stretch it out to get a nice tight fit and not waste net, because net isn't cheap. Right, so once you've tagged it to the bottom of the pot, you literally just put it over like that. And what you're aiming for is to try and sort of get your net squares, like get them square, stretch them out to their square. Or sometimes you'll have to compromise a bit if your pot is too big or too small for that net. But it's the best way to get the most out of your net. Obviously if your holes are all closed up, because your pot's too wide, you're going to lose so much net trying to net it. So. so, like I say, work your way around. You can tag it along here if you want, but I'm going to do it straight away because I know roughly where it's going to go. Um, don't over pull it tight, otherwise, you'll end up struggling to tie it to your side of your pots. So, like I say, you want it around about square the holes if you can do it. That's why it's good to make the pot the same size if you can. Right, so, there we go, that's, that'll probably do actually, and obviously just where the hole is, just follow them in a line all the way along and you'll know which ones to cut. So, easiest way to cut nets, pair of scissors. Um, yeah, we'll cut it on that one. So keep your cuts straight. It'll make your life a lot easier when you're using your net. Once again, just tie it off. Now, I one thing I almost forgot before I put the net on, I should have done this before I'd actually tied any of the net, is I'm going to put a trap in the pot, like a parlor trap. Now as you can see, I've actually taken this one off an old crab pot. It's a crab pot I decommissioned, but the traps are always fine because they don't get worn out. So I'll just be putting this one into here as opposed to making a new one. If you want to see how to make a trap for inside the pot, I'll leave a link in the description to another video which concentrates on doing the trap in a pot. Um, I won't put it in this video because it'll make the video very, very long because it's quite fiddly. But when basically the trap looks like this when it's in the pot, if you can see that. And it basically just opens up, lobster walks through, net kind of closes down and just just helps to slow the lobsters escape from these pots. Um, if they, you leave them long enough, quite often lobsters can still find their way out, but it does, like I say, hold the catch better, especially when we get a bit of bad weather and you can't get to your pots over, well, it'd be over a week or two. I mean, 
a normal standard pot is fine for a week or so. After that, the trap does start to help. So as you can see, the trap is in there. If lobsters will walk up, that will lift up, they fall through. And hopefully it makes their life a bit more difficult to get out so that we can get to the catch before it escapes the pots. That's the thing as well when you're using these big necks, you see, um, having that extra, having that extra is helpful. Like I said, if you've got a small neck, you don't have to worry about it because they, they will have more trouble getting out of a small neck. But when you're using the big crab necks, for obviously big crab and that, lobsters can find their way out of them. Right, now that's in, we'll carry on and get the rest of this netted now. So anyway, like I say, we've tacked this in place, it's not fitted on properly yet. And you're going to need a piece for the end, obviously, and this piece. We might be able to do this piece in one go. In other words, go around again and then just use the excess to fold over for that end. So, same thing. Hold on. A big roll. There we go. Same thing again, start at the bottom and just tack it in place for now. Now, if you do, if you're doing the pot with two with a join anywhere, you've got two choices. You can either wrap it around the pipe and just do that all the way around, or you can just tie the net together to the other net, which is probably what I will do. If you go around the pipe, just make sure you tie off every so often, because if that string happened to break for any reason. Your net might want to undo, even though you will have part of this roped. But the thing is, if you do it by the net, then you know exactly your nets are lining up with each other. If you do it independently, you might end up making one longer than the other kind of thing, or shorter. So, personal preference. But you'll just have to obviously tie every sort of link together. But this will be tied down to the pot afterwards anyway. So there's a bit of string, so it's, it's just doubling it really. The other advantage of doing it like this, tying the net, is if for any reason you ever took the net off, say, say you had a massive storm or something and your pot got smashed up, you got your pot and it was, you couldn't do anything with it, you could always take the net off the pot and just throw it over a new frame and if it's all strung together like this it's already ready to go kind of thing that's it's it's very unlikely that'll happen that you'll reuse the net it's, it's i think i've only done that once or twice taken the net no i've done it no actually i have done it a couple of times but that was like when i didn't have any net and i was skint and all the rest of it and i've recycled the net itself when i had to really scrimp and save kind of thing and i think i think one did actually I did have a damaged one, I was sitting out in the garden for a long time and I did actually take the net off and reuse it a couple of times, but it was really thick net, I think it was like a 5 mil net. And like I say, a 5 mil net just outlasts the pot. I wouldn't use 5 mil myself because one, it outlasts the pots, and two, it costs a lot more. The thicker your net gets, the more it's going to cost you. And like I say, what's the point of having a net that's going to last for 10 years when your pot will only last for 5? You know, you want to sort of balance it. And 3 to 4 mil net, 4 mil net's fine. 3 mil can get holes in it if you're using it consistently and they're out there in storms all the time. And well, with our weather conditions and tides, I mean, if you're in a calmer area, you might not suffer that problem so much. So 3 mil net might be fine for you. But if you're exposed out in the middle of the North Sea somewhere, you might need a 4 mil net. I mean, I know in the US I see some of the pots, and Australia, places like that, and some of the pots I see get used there, if you tried using them here, they'd last you probably a week. <laughs> because they're not designed for these sort of conditions. I mean, they can take a storm or two, yeah, but what we get here, sometimes the storms can rage on for two weeks, and your pot just can't handle that if it's not strong enough. Yeah, I'll tell you something else. When I was... Uh, I used to make 
crab pots, nets. I used to make the net as well sometimes. Because, you know, when you're a kid, you've got no money. Well, I didn't have any money. So you literally, I used to, like, collect things off the beach, you know, old nets and old bits of pot and crab pot nets so I could build traps and things. And some of my designs, they were terrible. <laughs> they really were. Um, they didn't catch much. I mean, they, they caught shore crabs, okay, and a few small crabs, but some of those designs were, were goddamn awful. I mean, I had some good designs as well, but when you first start out, you because you don't know much, you try everything, you know, you try all sorts of different designs, and, and like I say, making them back then, one of the designs that did obviously work was the was the basket pots. They they actually, that was one of the successes. But I I mean, I made I made out of garden netting. I made them out of bamboo garden netting. I mean, seriously, it, it'll last for a tide, maybe. But it doesn't take long for things to rip through it, you know, like pea netting and stuff like that. Well, not pea netting, but the, the small bird netting kind of thing. I mean, I tried all sorts to start with. A lot of failures, but like I say, I did have some success as well back in those early days. And of course, as the years move on, you learn from your mistakes. You learn to improve your designs. And before you know it, you've got some fantastic catching traps. And even to this day, I'm still coming up with new ideas all the time. So it's ne a never-ending sort of process. I know, I mean, I know which way not to go with a lot of them these days because I know simply they don't just won't work. But um, I'm always tinkering with them to sort of, you know, can I get a little bit more better pot, or will it catch a bit more, or will it take a different species? This kind of thing. Right, I've got to figure this end out now because what's going to happen with this end is, as you can see, there's a lot of net on here. Now, what I'll probably do because the thing is with the end, I'm going to, I'm going to have to leave it with a, I'm going to cut the net at one point where I'll put a string, and that's so I can empty the pot if I ever get anything there, like a conger eel or anything that's too big or whatever, I can't get out. Then I'll just open the end and tip it out. So. But what I think I'll do is I'll cut the net off, keep one piece either top or bottom, it doesn't matter, bottom's probably fine if it reaches, yeah, bottom bit there. So we'll do that, string the bottom bit up, cut that top bit off, and that top bit can then go onto that end yeah, by saving net. You've got to think about your net when you're doing that, because like I say, it's not cheap. Um, so you've got to try and conserve as much net as you can without sort of wasting it or cut, making bad cuts. So if we take the bottom, so now I just need to net the other end with the off cut. Because like I say, if you get your measurements or your cuts wrong on the net and you end up with lots of small excess bits, you'll either end up throwing them all away or you'll end up using all those little bits and stringing them together. So if you can get it right the first time, the better. Uh, that end is not very so uh, it doesn't mm, matter actually, I'll do it that way. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work nicely, so... Right, so, we've got this strong one, I've just got to put a bit of string on this bottom bit, but I'm not going to worry about that, I'll just rope it. Um, now, if you're only using these pots to take down the short or smaller ones, whatever size you're making, you can get away with just finishing it off, like I say, stringing it like this, anywhere it needs joining, and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about ropes and that, because you're only going to put it on the beach, you put rocks and it's not going to move. And you'll catch like that. Alternatively, if you live somewhere where you've got tropical seas, where it's lovely and calm, you don't get any rough weather, that kind of thing, you can use the pot just as it is with the strings. You've just got to put a neck in and add your weights. Lucky you. <laughs> Here, we're going to need to rope it. Now, we're going to need to rope the ends. 
both ends along the base and the first bar at the top you don't have to worry about this doesn't tend to bash rocks and if your pot's getting bashed up here then it's spending too much time upside down which is not right <laughs> that's how you lose your catch so that will be what we're going to do next and that is probably the most boring part of the build is roping it all for protection right part three the roping up so what you're going to need is you're going to need some rope alternatively you could use they do sell like stripped up car tires in strips and you can use that it's quite awkward to wind but it's good for the base it's quite heavy as well what I tend to do is I use my old ropes old crab pot ropes that are sort of end of life you might say the sort of thing you don't want to use to haul your pots up anymore and quite often I get given ropes from fishermen that kind of thing old ropes that they're again not going to use anymore and I'll just use them now first thing you want to do is either melt the end well this rope's been outside so it's a bit damp so I'm just going to tape the end like that and I'm going to cut this because there's a big chunk of lead just there so I'll get rid of that bit instead of I'm doing it I'll just chop it like that so what you want to do I'm going to start pick a corner I, what I tend to do usually is I start I start say this end of the pot I'll come along like that I'll go over the top of that and then back there and then I'll do exactly the same so it's like two separate ropes because obviously if you try and do the whole lot your rope is so long you have to feed it through all the time so that's normally a good one like I say start from one end work to there go over the arch come back and straight up and all these other bits you'll sort it out later and basically you've just got to find a starting point which would be say you see where we're going there like that and you want to go in and out pretty much each hole kind of thing now depending on the thickness of your rope it's up to you if you want to do more or less it all depends on how much you want to rope your, the, the bottoms of your pots obviously the more rope the more protection it gets but it's a lot more work as well and if you're in an area where it's not doesn't need it that much you can just go around quickly just a layer like I say just to protect your net and your string that kind of thing and like I say this is the most boring part because you've just got to literally stand here doing this now what you want to try and do as well is when you start tightening your net you want to tighten your net up you don't want it so ridiculously tight that it's um, how do you explain it if it's if it's extremely tight say and this drops and hits rocks it's more likely to break the net you want a little bit of give so if it bounces rocks it doesn't damage the net it'll sort of bounce off the rock if it's way too tight nicking it it can you know cut through the net quite quickly when it's overly tight so taut but not excessive and you just tighten up as you go you can always go into an extra hole higher up if you just want to get a bit more tension on your net but I like I say I always start with the where the join is so we get that sorted out first and like I say you just literally feed it through like this and then every so often once you run out of rope you just go back feed through some extra until you reach well we'll get there in a sec obviously I will shorten this bit for you now when you finish off all you've got to do is get a screwdriver an old screwdriver a big one lever up part of where you've whipped already and push your whipping back under that and then what you can do is if you're just put a zip tie through part of the net and over the end of your rope and that will stop it ever hooking and pulling back through at all just in case it doesn't normally you normally would just tuck it under if you put enough but um, it's just an extra thing to stop it coming off and it 
well they won't come off once they've got a zip tie on them not unless you use some really bad zip ties use black zip ties if you can the clear ones if they're left in the sun they will decay and they will snap now what size rope you, you use doesn't really matter if you use you can use anything from kind of 8 mil till up to 12 mil say um, if you're using thinner rope then you might want to go around a little bit more thicker rope you don't need to go around as much if you don't want to and the other thing is if you use thin rope and use the pot for a year and it comes in after a year and you see see the ropes a bit worn if there's been a lot of storms and that just give it another layer of rope next year like I say even an 8 mil rope will last a, a, a season at least minimum if, and that's usually if you go like I say you get just constant storms dragging your pots around if they're not heavy enough right let me cut some of these bits off and get the other bit done now when you're doing this if you're going to use rope try and get yourself some old rope two reasons one rope's expensive or two new rope is very buoyant this is only floating rope it's not uh, sinking rope but once it's been under the water for a while or old like this it's pretty much will sink quite easily um, obviously if you just leave it it would go back to the surface but it's it's not that buoyant if you get my drift but if you get new rope it'll be a lot more buoyant because it'll be full of air and that and I mean you can if you want but it's a very expensive way to do it if you do it that way like I said I'd advise trying to get some old rope or as the years go on when you're crab pot ropes you use wear out or they get worn or caught on rocks you can always replace them with nice new ones and use the old ropes for doing pots that's how I work it anyway and like I say some of the fishermen on that who change their ropes sometimes give me their old ropes for making the pots because they don't make the pots themselves they'll go and buy their pots some of them so their old ropes that are worn out aren't any use to them but they're fine for doing this sort of thing there we go, so we've done the base and the sides, we just need to do this bar, you'll need a bit here, you can get away with just an 8 mil on that, and then after that bit we need to do this bar and these, and from that point upwards you don't need to, I don't bother, I've never had to worry about here. Um, like I say, unless your pots are getting dragged around upside down in storms because your weight's wrong, this doesn't really take any damage. Or if it ever has taken any damage, the pot still outlives any of the damage. So it's always, like I say, here, because this is the bit that's going to hit the rocks. When you pull your pots up, it's going to bang into the rocks or that kind of thing. So it's just it'd be that bar and these. And you can get away with this, actually, with a thinner rope like 8mm. You don't need a heavy rope on it because it does take knocks but it doesn't take as much damage as this because when you think, when your bobbers, your pots on the seabed, your bobbers can sometimes on shift your pots and it just rubs that's why this one takes the worst and the ends when you pull your pots, you're, if you're dragging your pot along as you're pulling it up, it can bang into rocks so. right, so let me just finish these other bits and this is also where if you get it right, when you put your rope on, I'll show you, let me just tighten this up. If you go around, and then if you go around the back of the pipe and back like that, you are literally whipping the bar to the pipe as well. So it's not just the screw that's holding it, you're actually roping it all together as well, which makes added extra strength. You don't have to, but it can just help to strengthen the pot up a little bit. There we go. Almost finished. Now the neck. Just grab yourself a neck. I'm gonna find the neck. There's the neck. Grab yourself a neck. All you got to do is cut a hole in the neck here. Make it so that it's not too loose around the neck. Because obviously this is a square hole and your neck is round. Or maybe your neck isn't round, maybe your neck is square. Try that to start with, it might be a bit tight. There we go. 
do. So then all you do is you basically um, put, you'll put your neck in, you'll zip tie it or you'll string it, whichever you prefer. Before you do that, make sure to put weights in it to weigh your pot down. It's easier to do it when you haven't got the neck in because you can get your arm in there to sort the weights out. Um, you can put your weights in beforehand, but if you rope over the top of them, you're just using up more rope. And if you ever want to take your weights out, if they're roped in with too much rope, you're uh, struggling to get them out again. Crowd pot necks, I tend to use different bait systems. I might put a bait bag in this. I might use a wire or I might use a band around the neck. I'll probably put a bait bag into this. Basically cut open, put a bag in there, sew it in and you can put the bait in from the outside. Um, again, if you want to see that, I believe there's a video somewhere on it. it might, it's one of the other crab pot ones um, where I talk about baits, bait bags, bait wires, and the pros and cons of using each. What I do tend to do though is I do put a hole in the neck here, so the hole goes there, and if you ever break your band or don't want to use your bait bag or just want to put a fish head in you can just put a wire through there in the emergency just keep some spare wires on the boat so like i say put your weights in weights i would use sash weights sash weights are for anybody who doesn't know they're from windows from old windows they're hard to get older these days and they look like that they're cast iron that's an old one and they come out of the old sash windows so if you can get hold of any of those which is like i say is tricky you can use angle iron in there, um, or you can use, you can get like bricks or like from driveways, like the uh, heavier stones, not brick brick, but the heavier ones that they use on cobble streets kind of thing, granite almost. And if you put them in a bit of net, and you can tie them into the pot to weigh the pot down. Um, just find something heavy and small, obviously the bulkier it is, the lighter it is, the more space it takes up in your pot. So. There you go. Let's put that back in for now. There we go. Of course, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. It all helps to keep the channel ticking over. What I'll do is I'll also leave a link, it might be in an end tile, but it'll be in the description, to a playlist of other builds. There's more crab pots, uh, prawn pots, lobster pots, shrimp nets, there's all sorts of different builds, even fishing lure, making fishing, different types of fishing lures, that kind of thing. If you want to see how to do any of that, now I've just got to wait for the boat to go in the water, and we'll take this out.